So, unless you've been living under a rock for the past 10 years, you have no doubt heard of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, spanning 10 years and 22 movies, and easily the most successful film franchise of all time, garnering $22 billion with a B. That's more than twice of second place, which is $9 billion with Star Wars. With the conclusion of Endgame and the Infinity War saga, it seems that many of the heroes will be putting down their mantle, which naturally means that there will be more superheroes replacing them. Asian superheroes is something not very prominent in current media. Granted, there have been a handful of Asian superheroes already. Wong from Doctor Strange, Blink and Psylocke from the X-Men series, Agent May and Quake from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and then there's also Nico Minoru from Runaways. We also have Drax and Mantis, whose actors are Asian, but technically, they're aliens. Traditionally, Asians in most superhero movies are usually playing goofy sidekicks, a stereotype, or a girl that's been incredibly over-sexualized. And it's pretty rare that we see an Asian superhero, especially male, on the big screen. Which superheroes do you think should make it into the MCU? either the movies or TV series. We'll start off the list with one of my favorite superheroes. I won't be covering any superheroes that have already appeared in movies, with one exception, and I also will not be covering Shang-Chi, as he has already been confirmed to be in the MCU. Now, we're all familiar with the story of Peter Parker, a normal high schooler that gets bitten by a radioactive spider and is suddenly blessed with crazy spider powers, but it just so happens that same spider bit one other, Cindy Moon. Unlike Peter, Cindy actually had trouble controlling her spider powers and didn't master her skills until six years later. For the most part, her abilities are identical to Peter's, with some slight differences. Her spidey senses, or silk senses, as Cindy likes to call it, is much stronger than Peter's, giving her an almost perfect memory, learning and memorizing large amounts of information with little difficulty. She is also noted as being faster than Peter, but physically weaker. But the biggest difference is her web. The MCU Spider-Man, like the comics, uses a machine web shooter, but Silk, like Tobey Maguire, shoots web organically, but unlike Tobey, it comes out of her fingertips. Reportedly, Silk will be in the Sony Spider-Verse series, joining Gwen Stacy in her spin-off adventure. But is there a chance that we'll ever see her in the MCU? Actually, Cindy Moon is already in the MCU as one of Peter's classmates. Now, we don't know if this Cindy Moon in this universe will ever become Silk, but it is an easy path to do if Disney ever wanted to do it. Shiro Yoshida was born shortly after the events of World War II to a mother that was dying due to radiation poisoning from the bomb in Hiroshima. As a result, he was born a mutant with solar radiation powers. Shiro is recruited by Professor X to join the X-Men and is actually one of the first X-Men in history, joining the same time as Wolverine and additionally the first Asian X-Men member. Oftentimes, he's compared to the Human Torch. Sunfire has the ability to absorb and manipulate solar radiation. Through his hands, he can release and shoot plasma blasts, searing heat, deadly radiation, or if he wants, pouring old flames. Sunfire has been known to be able to create plasma blasts of more than 1 million degrees Fahrenheit, or 550,000 Celsius for my metric friends. That's approximately 100 times hotter than the surface of the sun. Created in 1970, Sunfire is actually one of the first Asian superheroes in Marvel history, so it'd be fitting to see him in the MCU. Karma, aka Sian Koi Man, is probably the most prominent Vietnamese superhero in the Marvel Universe and was an early member of the X-Men. Karma was born in the central highlands of Vietnam. Karma's origins are mostly laden in tragedy. Her father was killed during the fall of Saigon and her family then tried to escape on a boat to the United States but unfortunately was boarded by pirates and her mother was killed. Karma has the ability of mind control. She uses psionic energy that causes individuals to lose consciousness and places them under her control. She can also alter her enemies' memories. She eventually becomes strong enough to control multiple people at once. Who even needs the Mind Stone when you have Karma? The son of Wolverine and his Japanese lover, Itsu. Akihiro had a very sad childhood. His mother was murdered when he was still in the womb, but his healing factor allowed him to survive, and a series of events also left his stepparents dead. Like his father, Wolverine, he carries many of the same abilities, but with some slight differences. Dokken can regenerate, but unlike Wolverine's automatic regeneration, Dokken's takes focus and a conscious effort to regenerate and can be slowed or sped depending on his mood. Dokken has two claws at the top of his knuckles and one on the wrist. He's also a trained samurai, having expert skills in swordsmanship and hand to and combat. This might be a questionable choice for some people, as for most of his history, he's been a villain and not really a hero. But much like Loki, there have been times where he's done acts of heroism for the greater good. Dawkins' life is very tragic and was influenced by a lot of events outside of his control, so it's easy to see why he turned out the way he is. You can't just define Dawkins in black and white because he's such a complicated character. It would be amazing to see a Jamie Lannister or Prince Zuko type redemption arc for someone like Dawkins, who I think would make a great story in the MCU. Yeah!
The next three characters are all new heroes to the Marvel Universe, and just had their comic debut this year in Agents of Atlas. The first is Pearl Pangan, aka Wave, a Filipino superhero from Cebu City. She is an agent for the Triumph Division, which is basically the Filipino version of the Avengers. Much like Waterbenders or Mirror from Aquaman, Wave has the ability to control and manipulate water. The reason Wave is so significant is that she's the first Filipina superhero of any importance. This is also the first time a Filipino has been the central character of any Marvel story. Lei Ling, aka Arrow, is the next superhero that debuted in Agents of Atlas. She is part of a hero organization in Shanghai. Her story starts out with her investigating a disturbance in the ocean that leads to a confrontation with Wave. Turns out both of them were being lured into the ocean as an enemy force of fire demons attack Shanghai. Arrow's ability is aerokinesis, or the ability to generate and manipulate wind. Think Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender. Also debuting in Agents of Atlas is Luna Snow. Solji was an aspiring K-pop idol hoping to earn money to take care of her elderly grandmother, who raised Sol since the tragic death of her parents. When the crime organization known as AIM attacked a Stark Industries event where Sol was performing, a horrible accident with a cold fusion energy experiment gave her ice powers, which she then used to defeat AIM. Her heroic actions made her an overnight sensation. So just to recap, she's a white-haired K-pop star that can sing, dance, and has magical ice powers. So, basically a K-pop version of Elsa? Huh. The absolute best part about this character, she has her own K-pop songs, and even a music video. Now, she's an extremely new character, debuting in just 2018, but just like her fictional character, she's become an overnight sensation, and a huge fan favorite. I don't know about you guys, but if I were you, I would definitely stand Luna. Kamala Khan, a Pakistani teenager from New Jersey, noted as being the first Muslim superhero. Khan grew up as a normal girl and idolized Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel! Only the greatest superhero that ever lived, and this is a limited edition collector statue, aka worth a lot of money. She discovered that she's actually an inhuman and gains the power to morph her body into different shapes. Her body parts can stretch, expand, and compress. With Captain Marvel being introduced, Kamala Khan as a protege could be a logical next step in Daniel's story. You okay? Let me help you up. <laughs> Amadeus Cho is a 19-year-old Korean-American and is regarded as one of the 8 smartest people in the world. In a tragic accident, Bruce Banner was hit by an explosion of a mysterious makeup, and in order to save his life, Amadeus Cho transfers all the radiation from Bruce to himself, causing him to receive the powers of the Hulk. In a post to Banner, who is mostly angry and gloomy because of his life as the Hulk, Cho embraces his Hulk life, a much younger, totally awesome, and plucky Hulk. Dude. Don't call us plucky. We don't know what it means. Him and his sister are often seen doing missions and fight crime together. And the preferred method of travel? Check this out. A flying Korean food truck. Awesome, right? It's also interesting to note that aside from being Hulk, Cho is actually Spider-Man at one point in his history. With Mark Ruffalo most likely retiring from the MCU soon, Amadeus Cho might very well be able to take on the mantle of Hulk soon. A lot of people might complain that this is diversity for the sake of diversity, and it might be. It might not be. I mean, look at Nick Fury. He was originally white, yet no one complained when they made him black. We're going to finish off this list with arguably the most prominent Asian superhero in the Marvel Universe. And you can probably guess who it is. Born to wealthy Chinese immigrants in Beverly Hills, California, Jubilation Lee had a very happy childhood. That was until her parents were murdered, forcing her to become an orphan. Sometime after, Jubilee became the youngest member of the X-Men at the time. She's often seen as a sidekick to Wolverine, with an almost father and daughter relationship with Logan. Jubilee's powers has always been the butt of many jokes when compared to the other X-Men. Oh, she uh, shoots fireworks, uh, big whoop. At least your name makes sense. My name's Jubilee. I blow stuff up. Technically, they aren't fireworks. They're pyrotechnic energy blasts, and she can manipulate these blasts, controlling where they go, how, and when to blow up. It's said that with her powers, she has the ability to explode matter at a subatomic level, and in theory could even split atoms. This means that if she really wanted to, she could make almost anything into a nuclear bomb. How insane is that? Which would place her well beyond the destructive powers of almost all the characters in the MCU. And out of all the characters on this list, Jubilee is the one person that I'm certain about will end up in the MCU. She's such a classic character and such an important member to the X-Men.
Now, there are many characters that I think are worthy of putting on this list, and it was a struggle just to keep it down to 10. What do you think of my list? Did I miss anyone important? Probably, but let me know down below in the comments. I hope you guys liked my video. If you did, hit like and hit subscribe. And remember, never forget when Thanos yeeted Captain Marvel so hard, she flew back to the 1970s. Truly the greatest moment in MCU history.